So you're chasing a new personal best. This is one of the best times to do it. We're talking about a lot of big female bass up shallow. One of the best ways to catch those fish is to throw a glide bait like this LaGrady Lures Donut. Guys, those big females are going to be up shallow, but they're going to be hanging around isolated targets. I know you hear a lot of people talk about fishing docks. A lot of people talk about fishing laydowns. But one target that I think is your best bet at catching a big bass are isolated boulders. Now, this works for all three species of bass. Your smallmouth, your spotted bass, your largemouth. There is something about a big isolated boulder that those fish cannot resist when a glide bait comes over the top. A lot of times you may not even catch them on the glide bait, but you'll see them. They'll come up, they'll show themselves, and you can come back and, and fish it again with a slower moving bait and catch that fish that you saw. But the glide bait is really what turned you into that spot. And a big boulder is super good this time of year because of the fact that it's going to absorb a lot of sunlight, which warms faster, those big females are looking to warm their bellies up, to warm their eggs, to help them develop before they go to spawn. And not only does that big boulder provide them with warmth, it also generally provides them with shade. So you're going to have the sunlight hitting that boulder. There's going to be a rotating shade pocket around it, as well as a good ambush location. So when your big glide bait comes over the top, those fish are going to come up because they think they can ambush it. So don't forget, this time of year, your boulders are going to be a great place to catch those big females. Now, when I'm talking about a glide bait like this, this isn't an overly big one. This one's probably about five inches, uh, maybe six inches from head to tail. I like to throw it on a blended action rod. This is a custom built rod, an MHX CB907 that I use. Got a nice stiff backbone to it, but a very soft tip so that when those fish come up and nip at your glide baits, you get a hook in them without pulling that hook out. And then I've got it paired up here with an Abu Garcia Xenon reel. This is a 8.0 to 1 speed reel, so it's faster. But remember with a glide bait, I'm generally controlling it either with the tip of my rod or small reel handle turns. I'm generally not going to be fishing it with a straight reel retrieve. So a faster speed gear ratio reel for me is better because a lot of times and here's a tip for you. When you see a fish following it, one of the best ways to trigger that strike is to burn your bait for a few feet. So the faster your reel, the better explosion and that better quick run your bait makes away from the fish that triggers them to come and bite it. So I don't think having a fast gear ratio reel is a bad thing at all when you're talking about fishing glide baits. But make sure, guys, you pick up a glide bait, you go identify some big boulders, this time of year, you're going to have a chance at catching that personal best. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Bass Fishing Declassified. And much appreciate you guys checking the video out today. And man, I'm really excited about today's episode. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite lure categories, and that's glide bait fishing in the springtime of the year. And really over the past two years, I have become a fanatic about fishing these big glide baits. They are so fun to fish and they catch giant bass. They'll catch the biggest bass in the lake. So we're going to get into giving you guys some tips on where to fish them and maybe a little foundational understanding of the bait itself. So basically a glide bait is a large fish looking, fish resembling lure that's jointed like this. Um, this is the Mega Bass iSlide 262T. Now this is a large glide bait and this particular one, this is a large one, but there's a lot of different sizes of glide baits. There's they range anywhere between like five or six inches up to the big mega bass size here, the 262T. And in general, you want to use the larger glide bait because the whole purpose of a glide bait is to catch big fish. So the bigger the bait, you know, the bigger the potential fish that you're going to catch. Actually, this bait right here, this mega bass uh, 262T, uh, Oliver and I won the uh, big bass bash up at Lake of the Ozarks two years on this two years ago on this very bait. Um, so. You know, it, it lived up to its name about catching big ones. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about the bait, what it does. Now, the, the, the uh, 262T and most glide baits, they're designed to, to look like this. You reel them through the water, and they just swim back and forth through the water, just like that. Now, if you fish it like a jerk bait, which is the way I like to fish it, you can jerk it like that, and it goes side to side, back like that. That's the way I prefer to fish it, because it seems like I can get a little bit more of a reaction strike with it. So those are the two different ways. And the tackle that you have on this is also critical. You have got to use heavy tackle with this bait simply because it's so heavy. This bait right here weighs six ounces 
and different glide baits weigh different, you know, amounts. But for the most part, you need a seven and a half to eight foot, you know, heavy action rod. I use 25 pound test Seaguar and Vizex line on it most all the time. Heavy, heavy equipment. And the main thing about it is so you can cast it. I mean, when you load up a five or six inch, a five or six ounce bait on a rod, it, you put it on a flipping stick and it feels like the flipping stick's gonna break. So get you a heavy action rod, heavy line with that. So the next thing about it, let's talk about where and the conditions you wanna fish it in, because this is what's really important. There are very small windows where the big glide baits work. And here's what I found to be the most effective. First of all, water clarity. Um, you need water visibility of sort of like that three to five foot zone. That's ideal. Maybe two and a half, say two and a half to five feet is an ideal situation. The next thing you need is wind. You're not going to catch many fish on these big glide baits unless you have wind breaking up the surface. So I prefer like a 10 to 20 mile an hour wind, you know, two and a half to five foot of visibility. And I like some type of a heavy, partly cloudy or overcast day. Ideally, I like a cloudy day, windy, uh, clear water with a southerly airflow. Now, all that stuff is important because in order to get a fish to commit to a bait this big, you have got to have everything right. You've got to have the conditions right. You have to have your casting right. You have to be in the right spot at the right time. Because one of the things that glide baits are famous for, guys, is it will pull fish out of deeper water or it'll pull fish from a great distance and they look at the bait, but they won't bite it because it's so big that there has to be, all those elements have to come into play perfectly in order to get the bait, the bass to actually eat the bait. So what you need on that is um, uh, you have got to trigger that fish into biting a lot of times. So what happens is like, if you see a fish tracking the bait, which they do a lot of times, you know, if you say, say if you're working your bait like this and you see some follow, fish following it, all of a sudden just speed it up real quick, you know, almost like, you know, reel it real fast because most of the time that's going to trigger that fish. They're going to have to either come out and grab it or they're going to shy away from it. But if you, if you're reeling it like this along through the water like this and you see a big one follow it and you don't speed it up, most of the time that fish is just going to swim off. I'm going to guess probably, say for example, if you throw a glide bait all day long, um, and say you get, you know, 10 bites or say you get 10 fish to actually show interest in the bait, you may get two of those fish to actually eat the bait. That's, that's sort of the, uh, the sacrifice that you make. It's, it's like it's a high risk, high reward type of a bait. Another thing is talk about time of day. Time of day is critical. You would think with a bait like this that maybe low light conditions early and late in the day are best but you will find that you'll catch most of your fish in the middle of the day on it, between like 10 o'clock to two o'clock in the afternoon. That's the ideal scenarios for it. So anyway, guys, give them a try. There's a lot of different glide baits on the market here. Like I said, Mega Bass has got the iSlide 135. Um, they've got this 262T, a lot of different ones out there. Just commit to it. If you glide bait fish, guys, don't take anything else in the boat because what happens, you're gonna throw this thing for an hour and get tired of throwing it. But if you don't have anything else in the boat, you got to throw it all day long. And that's how you learn to get good with it. So anyway, guys, that's some good tips there. Hope it catches you a big one and we'll talk later. Really quick, if you guys enjoy the content in this video and want more personalized instruction, head to our website, fishthemoment.com. Then go to the virtual lessons page. Here you can book one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons with each member of the Fish the Moment team. In these one-hour lessons, the Fish the Moment team member will break down your lake using Google Earth and a contour line map and answer any questions you have. Whether you're preparing for an upcoming fishing tournament or a fun weekend on the lake, make sure you sign up for one of these one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons so you're fully prepared to catch as many fish as possible on the water. Check them out at fishthemoment.com. What is up, guys? Hey, I can't wait to share with you a little bit what I've learned about throwing these dudes over the past couple years. My part of the video, I'm going to talk about uh, glide bait fishing on a budget because it can get very, very expensive, as you guys know or may not know. So I'm going to share with you uh, from my experience and just some recommendations and tips on, uh, on let's say, you know, you're more limited on spending money or if you're not ready to go all in yet on the glide bait fishing and guys so like I know you just listen to Matt and Randy they have been fishing glide baits a lot longer than me uh, and I, I'm gonna just tell you that because even when I hung out with with both of them up at uh, Table Rock this past August it was crazy for me for me just to listen on Matt's 
expertise with the glide baits, how long he's been fishing with them. And, uh, and I was just kind of like surprised of how like long these guys have been doing this. It's hit the scene the past couple years, but, but these dudes were doing it before it was popular. And so just to let you guys know, uh, I'm going to, like I said, we're going to talk about the budgeting part of it. And like I said, let's say you just don't want to go all in on it. Now, guys, if you do have the money and want to spend and go all in, do it. It, it is worth it. Uh, but, but you are going to have to fish the lures. You need to fish them and, and go all out. Okay. And so one thing I did even in the past couple months, I took hours of my day just to throw these glide baits in to try to get better, learn about them, uh, use my forward facing sonar as well, just to, uh, to get more familiar with them. And it's been fun. So first of all, just talk a little bit about the baits. Glide baits can be expensive. I mean, you've seen them from anywhere from $20 to 300, 400, even more. Okay. Um, and and I'm, I don't have any in my boat that's over $200, okay? I, I do not. I'm not that guy. I coached a kid and really good friends with a kid that I've uh, I coached fish with, and he has glide baits for days, and he's been fishing glide baits uh, since I knew him when he was a 14-year-old kid. So me, I, I, the, the, the most expensive glide bait I got is the 6-inch draw. This is a 9-inch glide. Big, big bait, okay? I believe this is the live shiner color. I like this color. Got a couple colors in that. So, guys, on the glide baits, though, like I said, the, I think that one, don't want to get it wrong, $70, $80 glide bait, uh, which is an expensive lure. I mean, guys, it's, I mean, how many crankbaits can you buy and Senkos? But, uh, like I said, they're big and, and they're made at good quality. Now, uh, River to Sea has some good glide baits that are in that, you know, $20 to $30 range. Bass Pro lately has came about with a bunch of glide baits. Guys, you can get glide baits at a cheaper price if you're wanting to give it a shot. But just know... The old saying is you do spend, what you spend is what you get, okay? Uh, now, next thing, let's talk about uh, let's talk about rods. And this is a big thing, okay? Uh, one rod that's worked, and guys, you just heard Matt, Randy, and Matt even mentioned this. He, he talked about a 7.6 heavy crankbait rod, uh, and that's great. Uh, here, I want to share with you guys one. It's a, it's a 7.10, okay? This is a 7.10. It's the Nolly Attack Series. It's a 7.10 heavy crankbait rod. Um... The thing about, so so I have a couple crankbait rods. I got seven sixes, I got seven fours, seven eights. I love crankbait fishing, guys. This is my deep, 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 big plug rod. And this is great for throwing a glide bait, okay? And these bigger glide baits, like I said, this nine inch glide bait, bigger glide baits. So you can have a rod that will fish both a, a, a crankbait and then a glide bait. And so that's, that's the route I've taken is to where, hey, I'm gonna have a Big crankbait rod, because at times, guys, if, if I'm in this summer, if I get on that deep, deep crankbait bite, I'm going to have a couple of these on the deck. So I have, a, you know, for other times of the year or even the summer, I can have a glide bait on there. So anyway, so I've not yet went all in on a glide bait rod. So just to share with you that, uh, a big, heavy crankbait rod, you want that tip with a fast tip to where there is not much pull. Because like, like, you know, Randy mentioned, if you're if you're using a flipping stick, that thing's more thick up there, and you don't, and you know, with these hooks and how these dudes are designed, it's like crankbait fishing, top water. You don't want to rip it out of their mouth. You want them to be able to take it, and then you know you'll be able to set the hook, and then have a thick enough rod to bring them in the boat because they're big fish. Now, one mistake I made talking about reels. Uh, so you just heard me say, I mean, these are crankbait rods. I first I tried to use some of my slower gear ratio crankbait reels with these guys. And I learned that that slower gear ratio reel is, is not as a good of a, of, a, of a real action for these things. So Matt mentioned it, Randy mentioned it. I'm just going to say that seven to eight speed is great. What uh, I like to do, uh, okay, is if I am going to dedicate my time to this, um, I will get my flipping reel out and put it on my flipping reel. I have 20 pound fluorocarbon, and so I will put that on this if I'm going to dedicate time to it. Let's say I'm not, and I might be on a flipping bite, or you know, I'm just using that for the uh, for for its purpose. Then I will just use my six four gear ratio reel. But um, you know, it's kind of hard because after I've used the faster reel, I've realized how much better it actually is. Okay, line preference. Fluorocarbon is good, guys. I know a monofilament. I know people that use monofilament with it. I'm not going to go against it. Uh, I like the Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon, 20 to 25 pounds. Like I said, you just heard me say 20. That's just because it's on there already. Um, and you know, and if I'm fishing more around cover, I will get some heavier out. But, some, but sometimes I'm fishing this over open water, trying to bring fish up out of brush piles, rock piles, uh, even over standing timber, as you know, Matt mentioned, uh, the, 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 the rock piles. Now, guys, uh, like I said, monofilament though. I know people that will use Berkeley Big Game. You can buy it at Walmart. 
uh, you know, 1,000-yard spool is pretty cheap. I know people that will use 25-pound Berkeley Big Game. Some of you watching this are probably saying that's me. And that's like I said, hey, guys, Berkeley Big Game, some good stuff. It catches big fish as well. And so, guys, like I said, hey, just hopefully this helps on just budgeting, just a little bit of talking about the glide baits. Like I said, if you're ready to go all out, hey, if you spend the money, you will, of you know, down the road see the results. But you can still get these on a budget because it is expensive. Fishing's already expensive. And so, like, even me, I'm not all I'm not all in on, on the whole, you know, spending money on, on a lot of them yet. Like I said, these draws right here, like I said, they catch a lot of fish. They're pretty good. Like I said, these are good, good baits. There's others out there. Go give them a shot. Let let me know in a comment if there's any glide baits you like. Like I said, I just know you just heard one coming from Matt. Uh, Randy shared his, and then I just shared you one that I like. I have a couple in colors, and I just have stuck with those. So, guys, hey, we appreciate you watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. Let us know what's your favorite tip, and if you have a glide bait that you uh, have caught fish with and enjoy throwing.